start the day uh, with uh, the Detroit Poet Laureate, Ms. Uh, Naomi Long from Jet. Now, be honest, how many of you know enough about poetry in the city of Detroit to know that we have a Poet Laureate? Raise your hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay, because after today, you're going to know. If you didn't know, you're going to know after today. Um, Dr. Naomi Longajet is the Poet Laureate of the City of Detroit. She is founder and publisher and editor of Lotus Press Incorporated and professor of English Emeritus at Eastern Michigan University. She's the author of 10 books of poetry and two textbooks and editor of two anthologies. She's also the author of an autobiography, Pilgrim Journey. Her poems have appeared in numerous journals in more than 190 anthologies here and abroad. Among her many honors are an American Book Award, induction into three halls of fame, four honorary degrees, and several lifetime achievement awards. In 1993, the National Naomi Long Majet Poetry Award was established to recognize and publish an outstanding manuscript by an African American poet. On June 4, 2005, a life-size sculpture became part of the permanent collection at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History here in Detroit, the largest facility of its kind in the world. And two documentary films about her life and work have been produced and aired on public television and elsewhere. The first is A Poet's Voice, based on her book, Octavia and Other Poems, and most recently, Star by Star, Naomi Long Magic, poet and publisher, filmed by David Schott. And I had the honor of appearing in that film, and I've had the honor over the past year of, of getting to know her better. Please join me in welcoming Detroit's Boy Laureate. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. Day tomorrow, I want to read two civil rights poems. One of them, um, Alabama Centennial, I had the pleasure of giving to Dr. King when he was in Detroit three weeks before he was killed. The poem is called Alabama Centennial because I wrote it in 1963, a hundred years after the uh, uh, Emancipation Celebration. Um, and so many of the civil rights events took place in Alabama. They said, wait. Well, I waited. For a hundred years I waited, in cotton fields, kitchens, balconies, in bread lines, at back doors, on chain gangs, in stinking colored toilets and crowded ghettos, outside of schools and voting booths. And some said, later. And some said, never. Then a new wind blew, and a new voice rode its wings with urgent, quiet urgency, strong, determined, sure. No, it said, not never, not later, not even soon, now, walk. And other voices echoed the freedom words, walk together children, don't get weary, whispered them, sang them, prayed them, shouted them, walk. And I walked the streets of Montgomery until a link in the chain of patient acquiescence broke. Then again, sit down. And I sat down at the counters of Greensboro. Ride. And I rode the bus for freedom. Kneel. And I went down on my knees in prayer and faith. March, and I'll march until the last chain falls, singing, we shall overcome. Not all the dogs and hoses in Birmingham, nor all the clubs and guns in Selma can turn this tide. 
Not all the jails can hold these young black faces from their destiny of manhood, of equality, of dignity, of the American dream a hundred years past due. Now. The other poem uh, is called Midway. I wrote this in 1959, I believe, uh, following the um, 1954 Supreme Court uh, ruling on Brown versus Topeka, Kansas. And for the first time, the law was on our side. And the determination of African Americans was very obvious that we were never going back to the way things used to be. We had made some progress, but we still had a long way to go. And unfortunately, we still do. Uh, so I called it Midway. I've come this far to freedom, and I won't turn back. I'm climbing to the highway from my old dirt track. I'm coming and I'm going, and I'm stretching and I'm growing, and I'll reap what I've been sowing or my skin's not black. I've prayed and slaved and waited, and I've sung my song. You've bled me and you've starved me, but I've still grown strong. You've lashed me and you've treed me and you've everything but freed me, but in time you'll know you need me and it won't be long. I've seen the daylight breaking high above the bow. I've found my destination and I've made my vow. So whether you abhor me or deride me, or ignore me. Mighty mountains loom before me, and I won't stop now. poems. Uh, the first one is uh, one of seven poems I wrote that are takeoffs on hymns or spirituals and the Bible. And this one is called Stand By Me in grateful memory of Charles A. Tindley, 1851 to 1933, pioneer African American hymnist. And this is in the tradition of the uh, contemporary urban African-American experience. My Jesus was a standby friend. People in the Bible could always count on him being there whenever they was down on their luck. One time when he was sailing with his buddies, a sudden storm was fixing to turn their boat over and they all thought for sure they was going to drown. But he stood up calm as you please and said, peace, be still. And them waters settled down just like lambs. And the storm stopped raging, and they was all able to make it back to shore in one piece. And when Mary, the bad one, was fixing to get stoned to death for being a hoe, <laughs> he, stepped in and, he stepped in and said, Hey guys, how come you know be, you know so sure what she's doing unless you've been doing it with her? <laughs> if you don't want to deal with that, get lost. And they all took off running. <laughs> and he told her, "Go on now and don't do it no more." <laughs> My Lord was something else, all right. Still is, and I can testify to that. He's carried me through all my trials and tribulations, and I've had more, more than my share of them. Seem like I get tossed around sometime just like a boat in a storm, but I know I'm going to make it through, because I got my standby friend walking with me, holding my hand, taking up for me day after day after day.
quick sign of Negro spiritual. Both of those were uh, the part of the uh, tradition before reading and writing. And uh, they were truly the first really American music and poetry. So this is a, a poem in the form of blues, Monday morning blues. All night my bed was rocky, all night nobody by my side. My bed was cold and rocky, all night no good man by my side. The radiator sputtered, the furnace gave a groan and died. I woke up dreaming Friday, but not Monday dragged me out of bed. Yes, woke up dreaming Friday, Monday dragged me out of bed. Was looking for a paycheck, mailman brought me bills instead. <laughs> well, no one comes to see me, no one ever telephones. Nobody but misfortune visits me or telephones. Wish I could find me something as lucky as a black cat's bones. You may not see me smiling, still you'll never hear me cry. Seldom see me smiling, never gonna hear me cry. But I do a lot of laughing, cause I'm too damn proud to die. ending the program, a litany for Afro-Americans. Our ancestors called thee by other names, but thou, O oh God, were with us in the dawn of time. Lord, be with us still. From Ife and Timbuktu we came, crying to thee in the agonies of the Middle Passage. We cry to thee today. In the confinement of our bodies' chains, our spirits nightly floated free. Free our spirits now, we pray. We watched the captors steal our names, our continuity, the richness of our heritage, and we were naked and impotent against the evil of their power. Other captors rob us still. Teach us to be watchful, Lord. Teach us to be strong against false prophets, against destructive forces that seek to divide us and deny us the family of thy spirit, the family of our spirit. Protect us, God, and lead us in the way of power through righteousness. Amen.